Hey guys, it's Shallon. Welcome back. If you're new to this channel, welcome to the Shallantourage. I give you guys advice on everything from love and sex and dating, and more specifically, like pop culture news and trends and what we can learn from that and take into our own life. So today I want to talk about Kim Kardashian. She just did a new interview with Vogue that I thought was really telling and really revealing into the deeper, more sort of like shadowy sides of her personality, namely her narcissism. Like she is a pretty like textbook narcissist and God knows Kanye West is. But I don't just want to do a diss track on Kim. I like Kim. I love everything that she's achieved. I think she's a badass. And I think in a way she's like a true feminist. And I want to instead look at the traits we can take from a narcissist, things we can borrow sort of from their personality disorder and use to make our lives better and the lives of people around us better, right? Because life is all about taking something that might not be great, reframing it, repackaging it, upcycling it, and making it into something that can benefit us and our world. But first, just want to let you guys know if you have a private question for me, find me on the Instant Go app. My username is ShallonXO and click chat to get connected. Also follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter at ShallonXO and click like and subscribe for new videos every other day. And you guys are going to be so excited about this. Happy endings is back. Happy endings is a thing I do at the end of every video. It's a little sex or hookup tip. And I stopped doing it for a while uh, because of advertising thing, whatever, whatever. But the party's back on. And I figured since we're talking about Kim today, we're going to talk about sex tape. So stick around for the end of the video for a nice, like, juicy dig into sex tape. But let's talk first, yeah, about narcissism and the upsides to it. Because like everything, there is an upside. There's a thing to learn from every asshole in the world. Not that Kim's an asshole, but you know what I mean. There's something to learn and gain from studying Adolf Hitler, from studying ISIS. Maybe with ISIS, it's just like they managed to tie their scarves in a really kicky sort of way. I don't know. I'm not going to do a video on them anytime soon. But for narcissists, before we can dig into it, we got to understand what it is. So narcissism is a personality disorder, like borderline personality disorder, sociopathy, psychopathy, like being a psychopath. And it, it's different than like a disease like being bipolar or OCD and like those kind of things, because those you can medicate. You can't like give someone like a cool pill. You can't give someone an empathy pill. You can treat it with like medication. You can like dial down some of the intensity with like Xanax and stuff like that. But for the most part, for someone to cope with narcissism, it's cognitive behavioral therapy. It's replacing bad behaviors with good behaviors. But that's a whole other video. And if you guys want to see that video, if you guys think you're a narcissist, let me know and I'll do that video because I am, as one of you guys so eloquently put it, on the narcissism spectrum. My therapist has described me as a narcissist with a lowercase n and I'm like, okay, I will. Yes. Thank you. I'm a tiny menace, a baby predator, you know, but I feel like I kind of am just normal enough that I can recognize how abnormal I am. Does that make sense? You know, like I, I know what I'm not. So I'm kind of here as a double agent to tell you guys what it's like on this side of the fence of selfishness and what you guys can learn. So first, let, yeah, let's dig into what narcissism is. Here are some traits. And tell me, you know, think in your mind like, oh, does this sound like Kanye? Does this sound like Kim? Spoiler alert, it's both. Insatiable appetite for the attention of others. Jealousy, expectation of special treatment, exaggerating achievements. I'm the greatest artist who's ever lived. I'm Pablo Picasso. Actually, when you listen to all these, they're going to be way more Kanye like than Kim, but I'm not going to go into Kanye in this one necessarily because Kanye is also mentally ill. He's got bipolar disorder and I don't know where one, where narcissism ends and that begins and where, I don't know. And I find him boring and irritating. So whatever. I'd rather talk about him. Lack of empathy or ability to understand and share the feelings of others. You notice how like when Kim and Kanye interact, like he'll be like, I played Jay-Z's club and blah, blah, blah. And I won this. And she's like, Cool. Like she just does not give a shit. And that's not a game she's playing. Like they're two narcissists and side note of why their relationship works. Like she needs to be adored and Kanye gives her that. Like she is Kanye's muse. And so it's like this kind of circle jerk of like admiration. Like they, it's a very codependent relationship in that way. Like they depend on each other for their self-esteem needs. And if you guys want a deeper dive just into them, I will do one. But today we're going to talk about what we can learn from them. Seeking out praise and positive reinforcement. They've got to be the best. Tendency to consider themselves as skilled in romance. As skilled. I don't feel like that's a complete sentence, but 
an ability to take advantage of others to achieve a goal without regret or conscience. So this is kind of painting a good picture, right? You guys are like probably on board with Kim the narcissist, Kanye the narcissist. So what can we learn, right? And like I said, I like Kim. I love everything that she's achieved. And my indictment of the Kardashians has always been that they don't give back to society enough. Like if they asked collectively their followers, even one of them, for a dollar donation each, a dollar, they could eradicate a disease. They could wipe out a social issue forever. Think about that. So it's always been very irritating to me that they don't galvanize their power for good, only for sort of like self motivating thing, money. But we'll get to that later because Kim addressed that in her Vogue interview. So number one we're gonna talk about. The thing I want you to do is to take from Kim is to be selfish. Selfishness has like this really bad rap. Perhaps I, a narcissist, am biased about that. But I think there has also become this glorification of martyrdom, especially for women. I mean, think about how you speak about your energy level. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm tired. Oh my God. I'm tired. I know. I said, I'm so tired. It's like, that's like a badge of honor. We hold that shit up like Simba. Look at how tired and bedraggled I am. Like that proves our worth. That's a patriarchy talking. That's capitalism talking. People want to keep us working and keep us producing and feel, make us feel ashamed when we need to rest and make us feel ashamed when we prioritize ourselves and our goals. I get a ton of questions from you guys talking about how you can help the guy in your life reach his goals. And he needs help. <laughs> He's like sad. Blah, 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 blah. I don't give a shit about that guy. I give a shit about you. And you need to give a shit about you. Set your goals. Be selfish. Serve yourself first. You cannot be half of a whole in a relationship if you don't know which half you are. You don't have, if you don't keep this together, you're not going to be able to help anyone else. Think of yourself as like a vehicle. Like you can't, like an ambulance. An ambulance isn't much good to anyone if the tires are going bald and there's no brakes and there's no gas in the tank, right? Ambulance got to look out for ambulance, number one, before it can go and help anyone else. So be an ambulance. Be selfish. Number two, be self-sufficient. This is a big hallmark of narcissists that people don't, you know, that they don't focus on is like they're very, very independent. And it's because they don't have a lot of necessarily like super close relationships because it's probably, it's difficult for them to make them because most people don't want to be in a relationship with someone who's not real high on empathy, someone who's not really listening to their problems or caring about them at all, who's just saying, cool, when you bring home another Grammy, it's just like, that gets old real fast. So, but it, then the narcissist learns to depend on themselves. Look at the Kardashians. They don't depend on men. They never have. And they are all, I think, sort of like on this narcissism spectrum. Like, I mean, Chloe is sort of her own sad little, she's got her, she's got her own issues and I've done a video on her. But they rely on themselves. At the end of the day, their success and their failures are theirs, right? And I think that's something really good. Like we need to cultivate that more. It's like, no, that goes back to being selfish. Great things happen when you put yourself first in your life. And this is also the misnomer that putting yourself first is not throwing everyone else over the wall. Fuck you. No, again, it's filling that ambulance up with gas, keeping it in good shape. Now you have what you need to help other people. Now you can be a good mom. Now you can be a good girlfriend because you've taken care of you. Because when you're depleted, you're trying to get it from everyone else, right? And you're resentful when they don't give it to you. But like, we are all only responsible for ourselves. There is no prince coming to save us. No one is riding in on a white horse to rescue you from your own decisions and from your own loneliness and your own mind and your own lack of goal setting. You got to be that for you. This is something else I like. Be strategic about who is in your life. And exploitativeness is a huge hallmark of narcissists. They, they're users. You know, they use people for what they're good for. And when they're not good, they're gone. And like, Kim, I think is very, very strategic about who was in her life. You think she was friends with Paris Hilton because she was like, just loved Paris's personality. Another classic narcissist. I mean, she's just, uh, wow, she's, she's intense. But like, no, Kim was being very strategic. And like, I also, this is where the narcissism ends and me being a New Yorker begins. I am very strategic about who's in my life. Every one of us in that city is because we are tired. 
we are tired and busy and we only got so much time. So what the fuck do you want? You better be giving me something. And when I say giving me something, I don't mean like money or a job. You better be giving me, you better be lending me an ear. You better be giving me empathy. You better be like a good friend to me and a soldier for me. If you're not, if you're just taking, 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 and there's no reciprocity, no, I'm not going to be a go-to for someone I can't go to, you know? And this also, this sort of like narcissism served me well in business because I am very charming and I don't burn any bridges. I keep everyone kind of like, you know, I compartmentalize people. There's work people. There's like my good, good girlfriends, but it's like, I... I keep, I maintain those relationships just enough. I water them just enough so that if I need them, I can call on these people and it's not like out of the blue and so naked that I need them for something, that I need them for a business thing, a recommendation, a job, a partnership, or what, a whatever. And like, I don't keep people in my life who I'm not organically enjoying. You know, like there is that element and that foundation of like, okay, I like these people. If they're just like terrible, like I don't care what you can do for me. If you just suck, if you're mean to others and you spew hate on the world, no, I don't need you. I can burn that bridge. But I think about it. I'm very Machiavellian in who I have in my life and the role that they play. And I, I mean, I hope people don't think that they're just a means to an end because I really try really hard to make that not very apparent. <laughs> but that's business. That's business. Kim knows that. She doesn't have a big circle. The people in her life are there because they're doing role. And people do double duty. I've said this before in videos about the Kardashians. Like at that level, it's really hard to make friends. You kind of just don't make friends. That's why she keeps Jonathan Chevin around because he's just like been there. But like her, one of her good friends is her makeup artist. Another is the stylist and whatever. It's like these people are all fulfilling a role. Even the way she speaks about Kanye, he's my number one stylist. I run everything by him. He has a role in her life beyond just love. So look at the people in your life. Do they have a role in there beyond just like emotional seat filler? Are they just like, well, they're my group of friends. It's like, do they give you anything? Are you learning from them? Are you bettering yourself because of them? Maybe not. Ah. Disconnect from things that don't serve you, right? All right, we cover that. Oh, wait. Okay, no, we didn't. Disconnect from things that don't serve you. This is like what I took in a big way from Kim's Vogue interview. She was talking about Kanye and how he has re-accepted his bipolar diagnosis. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he has and he hasn't in that he, Kim admitted like he, he's not taking medicine. Look, it's everyone's individual press preference, those antipsychotic drugs are very, very powerful and they have a huge muting effect. And that's what she said that like, it really affected his creativity. Like I know I used to have clinical depression and when I would take antidepressants, I just felt like gray. I didn't feel black, but I didn't even feel that interesting. I was just like, Bleh. so it, I really didn't like it. And I understand where he's coming from. However, I think if you are going to be a father and a husband, I think that's kind of a selfish thing to do because now everyone else just has to deal with you. You get to do whatever and everyone else has to completely orient around dad because dad's not having a great day. Dad's having a bad episode. It's in essence, I think kind of emotional terrorism. You're sort of holding people hostage to the way you have chosen to live your life. But we're not going to talk about Kanye. But one thing Kim did say is like, she has had to disconnect from him in a lot of ways because it was giving her so much anxiety, the decisions he was making. She was talking specifically about him wearing the MAGA hat and like being a Trump supporter and just like that whole slavery is a choice. Oh my God, Kanye. And she's like, it was giving me so much anxiety and I'm screaming it about him. And I finally, I just had to like, I forget her exact words. She's like, I just had to disconnect. I don't care anymore. Can you imagine how hard that is to do with your husband? We know how hard that is to do with anyone in our life, to just be like, I am, as the cliche goes, I'm canceling my subscription. I'm over your issues. You know, it's really, really hard to unplug from a situation where you were just like, please be better. Oh, like be healthier. We've seen a friend in a toxic relationship. We've seen a friend who's drinking themselves into, you know, a complete loser lifestyle or eating themselves or shopping too much. Like we watch this and we're like, huh? I can't imagine what it's like to watch a spouse do that, you know, or a child, you know, if you have a child with a drug addiction, my God, that's awful. But Kim, 
her, she tapped into that narcissism and she disconnected. She's like, this isn't serving me emotionally. It's gassing me up. I'm stressed. I'm anxious. It's coming between us, probably affecting the kids, seeing mom and like, ah, a spiral. And dad's also in a spiral. Mommy can't be in a spiral. So she disconnected from that. And I think that that's a really good, healthy thing. You have to set those boundaries. I personally think she'd be better off if they got divorced altogether. I just, I think he, that relationship is probably so draining for her. And who knows? Maybe they're in love. What do I know? Another thing. This is my number one takeaway from narcissists. Expect success. Narcissists have a sense of entitlement. What is entitlement? I feel like we as millennials, we hear that all the time. Entitlement, entitlement. It means, say you're at a job interview and someone's like, why do you, do you think you're better than all the other candidates? Yes. Here's where the entitlement comes in. When they ask you, why? Why are you better? <laughs> you have no answer, right? Why do I deserve to be in VIP? I just do. Because I'm me. And narcissists will dress up that question in very like glib ways. It's like, oh, really? You think you just deserve this? I'm like, yeah, look at me. I'm me. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, but you can't answer that question, right? So there's a lot of entitlement there. But entitlement, the upside of entitlement is positive thinking. I just did a whole episode on vision boarding and positive mental energy and the law of attraction and creating this reality. And it's like, hell yeah, I'm entitled. I'm entitled to every good thing the universe has to offer. I'm entitled to success, love, money, six pack app, firm butt, all of it. Like I deserve it. And you can have that point of view as long as it's not like pushing everyone else out of the way. You know what I mean? But take that. And Kim, everything she goes into, she expects it to be successful. Of course, I'm going to be a celebrity. Of course, this makeup line is going to kill it. Of course, my show is going to be renewed. Of course, it's an of course mentality. And that works. I mean, when you have that mentality, that people, it's actually very attractive to people. It comes across as charming and confident, authoritative, willful, and most importantly, as a leader. We're pack animals. You know, we are. And we like a leader. And people are always just kind of like milling around waiting to be led, like for someone to emerge and galvanize and take the reins. I mean, it's very interesting. If you look at historically at what people at the time have said about very divisive leaders, Adolf Hitler, Michael Bloomberg, Donald Trump, they all say the same thing. He's decisive and I like that. Sometimes that's kind of all people are looking for. So when you're decisive in choosing something is going to work out for you, people are magnetized by that. And that, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Those people are like, yeah, it is going to work out for her. I want to help it work out for her. I want to be in the sphere of this success. I want this attitude for myself. And suddenly you've attracted the people in your life who are going to make it a reality. You've thought it and you've actualized it. So, you know, be a little bit entitled. Unless you're trying to like get something that I'm going after too. Another thing Kim does, she knows her value. Narcissists don't put themselves on any kind of clearance rack. Not professionally, not emotionally, not socially. They are the bright, shiny penny. They are the number one thing. And they're not going to dim or bow or apologize to make anyone else's ego feel better. Oh, you don't like it? You don't like my value? You don't like the price I've set for this item for myself, for my access, for my questions that you might have about love and dating? Bye. I don't need that. And that's the thing. Narcissists have this attitude. It's like, well, I don't need you because they don't. They only need themselves. And it's an interesting it's an interesting dynamic because it's like narcissists, they're very self-sufficient and yet they need the adoration of the masses, which is why so many celebrities are narcissists. And we think that, this, that the fame creates a narcissism, but no, it's like you can have, we, we've seen this story a million times. It's the oldest story in the book. Like they, they're at the height of their career and they have an Oscar or a Grammy and they go home to a big empty house. No one loves them. It's because they don't cultivate those individual relationships. They need it from the masses. That takes priority. And that is kind of a recipe for success. Like I said, you you get people out of the way. You know, it's obviously it's got its downsides, but we're only focusing on the upsides of a kind of bad personality disorder. I touched on this before, but don't be overly impressed with people. Girls, if you're dating, it's like I have a very reserved and detached way that I date. 
I've dated a lot of very famous people and male models, athletes, rock stars, whatever. I'm not usually the prettiest girl in the room. I'm not the tallest. I don't have the biggest boobs, the tiniest waist, or the biggest bank account. What I do have is this detachment that I don't need anyone. And people are like, oh, again, I'm setting myself sort of as a leader. I'm a pack leader. It's like, well, you can follow me, but I'm not following you. That's how this works. And guys are like, oh, okay. I mean, I'm telling you, it works. So Kim, she's got the same thing. It's like, I like you, but I don't need you. Courtney does this really well. You know, her, she's always like, cool, that's great. And it's, dudes love Courtney. You know, that's the number one Kardashian that guys are after. So take a little bit of like an aloof stance. It's like, all right, you're just like telling me all about your like stock bonus. That's cool. That's great. Nice. Why don't you ask me questions? Focus on me. I don't want to hear all about you. Another thing narcissists do is they don't take responsibility. It's everyone else's fault. It's never them because it's an ego thing. You know, like they're not going to take responsibility. And that is an odious trait, obviously, when people, you, you know what it's like. I'm sure you guys know narcissists and you call them out on something and they deflect or they're like, well, you do that too. And it's like, well, it's because of blah, 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 blah. But they're never just like, oh, you're right. I'm sorry. That's awful. They don't do that. They deflect and they push away. So how can we use that to our advantage? In what situation is that actually a good thing? I think in business. Ladies and guys, hopefully not everyone, has experienced this where it's like, <laughs> it's the group project thing. You get a bad grade in a group project or on a project to work. And it's like, you find yourself apologizing, taking the responsibility. It's like, no, no, no. Can you be like, actually Brent in accounting dropped the ball on the thing I assigned for him. Would you like to speak to that? Like, I, this is how I operate in business. It's like, uh-uh, I'm not falling on my sword when people drop the ball on what they were supposed to do or didn't contribute or hogged all the limelight when it was convenient. And then when it actually came time to do something, they were nowhere to be found. No, you're getting your ass called out. No, thanks. And that's how you should behave. And again, it's like, I don't care if people like me. I don't need them in that way. And last but not least, I said I would touch on this night. We're here. A big thing Kim talked about in her interview is how she's going to go to law school. Or I'm sorry, she's going to take the California bar exam. And you actually don't have to go to law school to take the bar exam. But you have to, what's called, read the law. It's boring. Nobody cares, whatever. But I think it's amazing that she's doing this. And it's really such a shift in who she's historically been. Like I said, I've always ugh, like rolled my eyes at them because they just don't contribute anything. But then she's been on these campaigns to get like, you know, harshly convicted women out of jail. Alice Johnson, she got that overturned and got this like grandmother, low level drug offender out of prison. She's going to probably spend her life in prison. You know, it's so ridiculous. And so I love that Kim is doing this. And narcissists do things because it makes them feel good. They, everything they do is oriented around feeding that ego. And if you guys have ever messaged me and you've been like, how do I make friends? Or I have all this anxiety, I have all this depression. I'm blah, blah, blah. every one of you. I have told to go volunteer, get your ass to a soup kitchen, a food bank, a children's cancer ward, a dog shelter, get out of your own head, get back to who you are, get back to the knowledge and the truth that like you have value in this world. You're not just who you date, who you married, what your grades are, what your mom and dad think about you. You have value and you go out and you prove it. So like, even if you don't give a shit about the people you're helping, even if you don't care, that's fine. because. It's still getting done and justifies the means. Machiavelli, you see? You are building up that core of self-esteem. So Kim is probably doing this because it makes her feel good. It's a whole different dimension to her. It's a whole different fan base. It's a whole new her. It's a reinvention in a way that probably she's like, oh yeah, I'm smart now. Everyone thinks that I'm smart and political. But I don't care because she's doing good things. So whatever her motivation is, fine, yay, that's great. So take from that. Go out and change the world, and you're going to change yourself in the meantime. If you guys have more questions on, the, on this but, or want to talk privately, find me on the Instant Go app, like I said, and click chat. My username is ShallonXO. Sorry, I feel like I'm turning like as purple as a shirt. This room is so hot, and I won't open the window. But now you know what it's time for? <gasps> happy endings. That's right, guys. Happy endings is back. Today, we're going to talk about sex tapes. But first, a word from our sponsors. All right, sex tapes. This worked out pretty good for Kim. And it seems like since then, every celeb's got a sex tape. 
all of us have sex tape, blah, 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 blah. Let me tell you something. If you've never made a sex tape, here's a story. I grew up playing ice hockey and I was good. I was real good. And one day I asked my mom to film my game. It was a big playoff game, big deal. And I was, I was like, I was going to do it. Now keep this in mind. I was in full, full gear, head, helmet, just full hockey gear. And I was good at what I was doing. I was an agile, graceful, capable athlete. And when I watched that tape, I looked like a wildebeest on roller skates in the middle of a hurricane. I was horrified, deep, deeply scarred and horrified. And I was completely clothed doing something normal, something that I was good at. So that's why I am not a big advocate of sex tapes. Because when you think of a sex tape, you're probably picturing porn, right? Because that's the only sex tape most of us have watched. Porn is not filmed to feel good. It's filmed to look good. What feels good is usually very subtle. I mean, think about someone kissing your neck, right? It's If you just took a picture of that, it's like a mouth on a neck. You don't see what like the tongue and the sucking and all of that. It's just like, it's very subtle, but you're like, oh yeah. Someone just like licking your ear. It's amazing. Like a guy going down on a roll isn't like, just like super visually that cool. So what we see is not going to feel good. So it's like, if you're going to film what you organically do in bed, which is the things that feel good, it's not going to look great on camera. And also the hockey example, you don't know what you look like from certain angles and God made it that way. That's why you can't rotate your head 180 degrees behind you. You're not meant to look at your own ass from that angle or perhaps a variety of angles. You're not maybe meant to look at your vagina because, I mean, you should, like as a, as a woman, you should like be aware of it and look at it, but perhaps not on camera because you're comparing it to a porn star's vagina, which is waxed and bleached. Yeah. Because the vagina isn't supposed to be like bright white and pink. Like it's not a goddamn candy cane. It's supposed to have like color variations. Certainly if you're a person of color, there's not a lot of that represented in porn. Certainly not as much. So it's like you might look at this tape and be like, I am a monster. I'm a monster. And the la can you imagine ruining sex for yourself? Oh. The thing that makes a person good in bed, the number one thing, is confidence. Ah, the narcissist, you right? I'm good in bed because I'm confident because I have this attitude of like, <laughs> yeah, you want to be sleeping with me? Are you kidding? You want to ride this train? Not, not a real train, not like a sex, but no, I didn't mean it like that. But like, if you take that away and suddenly you're self-conscious and you're like, oh no, don't look there. I know what that looks like. That's really, that's exhausting for guys. Cause they're like, Ugh. I've had guys tell me before they're like, I don't, I like to hook up with girls who are really into working out. They're fit. Not because they feel better. They actually like, I've had guys say like, I don't want like a super muscular girl. I'd rather have a girl who's a little thicker. Like it's, it's nice to have like stuff to grab onto and stuff. He's like, but the fit girls are more confident. And that's what matters. The girls who maybe are a little chubby and I don't like turn the lights up. No, don't touch it. Uh, and it's just like, ugh, it just takes you out of the moment. So if a sex tape could even maybe have that consequence, I don't think that's worth it. I don't think that's worth it. Just watch porn. Watch someone else's sex tape. Watch Kim's. It's pretty good. She does this thing. That's a great move. That's a great move. And then, of course, we have to examine the ramifications. Somebody is going to show your sex tape to someone. This is, these are facts. Things live in perpetuity on the internet, in the cloud. I don't even know what the cloud is, but I don't trust it. Just like regular clouds. Is it coming this way, that way? What's in it? Lightning, thunder, rain. Nobody knows. Nobody knows until it's already raining down upon us. So if you do do a sex tape, here's my advice. Do it on your phone. Turn the goddamn cloud off. Turn Wi-Fi off altogether. Do it on a private browser. Lighting is key. There is nothing more unattractive than broad daylight. Candlelight is going to be your friend. If you have to do it from a perspective, like maybe him holding it while you're behind. I don't know. Again, it's not really worth rolling the dice to ruin something that's so fun because that those images boy if they're anything like my hockey game will haunt you for the rest of your life i hope that you guys enjoyed this if you have other happy ending topics leave it in the comment section below and talk to me about our topic today how do you deal with a narcissist what would you tell people to learn from a narcissist and like i said if you have questions of your own find me on the instant go app at shallon xl see you next time